guys, it's Rogway here, and today we are looking at making simple design based games in Animate. And um, basically, this is sort of an intro to game logic and how games work, um, but on a real, real, real simple sort of um, a level here. Um, the example that I've included here are the Telltale game uh, collection. And if you've ever played any of these games, you know that most of these games are decision based. Uh, you watch a video, you make a choice, or you have to do things in a certain combination. Uh, and if you don't do it in the right amount of time, you fail. Um, that's the type of game we're looking at today, but just a real simplified version of that um, and we could you could actually go quite a bit further with this you could make really complex games watch my other videos if you want to see how to do that but we're going to keep it really simple here and just make an interactive decision based game and uh, let's get let's get started so in here you're going to see a folder of files that I've created and before we open anything up, we want to go into the fonts folder and we want to install these two fonts. Okay, so we're going to double click the Eller display and we're going to hit, oh, here it is, we're going to hit install and we're going to hit the true lies. Don't worry if this comes up, that just means I already have it, but the true lies, install that one kind of this slasher film horror type uh, font and now we're good okay we got the two fonts that we're gonna need inside here we also got some game images and I I'm not gonna lie I ripped these off of Telltale um, but again this is just to show you how animate will handle this uh, I got some sound effects and now we're gonna go into the survival FLA file that'll open with animate we're actually going to um, build the game itself. So let's do that. Now while that's loading, uh, I just want to talk about how Animate itself uh, works it, um, or how the coding within Animate itself works. Um, it uses a language called ActionScript. And ActionScript is uh, fairly easy to understand. There's a lot, of, like I said, there's a lot of complex stuff you could do with it. But if you're familiar with JavaScript, uh, you'll see a lot of similarities between the two. Uh, fortunately, Animate has options for people who don't know how to code so that they can um, get up and running sort of quick and easy. And that's what we're going to look at today is just how to get a simple game made fairly quick uh, with not a lot of uh, coding involved. So. Uh, let me just get that going. Here we go. Okay, here we are inside of the survival file, and you'll notice that we are greeted with this sort of decision that we would have to make within this game where this particular person is surrounded by the dead and in a field, and what should you do? And so this is kind of a very typical sort of uh, decision that we might have to make within an actual game. Um, and this is going to be the easiest game ever. You're basically going to have to make one choice and it's going to either be correct or it's going to be wrong and you're either going to win or you're going to die. And uh, we could build off this concept to make it more complex if we wanted. Basically, in here, if we look down at our timeline, and I'm actually going to give myself a little more room by increasing the size of my timeline. I'm also going to zoom in so I can fit in window for the entire stage so I can see that. Uh, in, if we look in our timeline, you'll see that I got three layers. I got the background, which is the picture. I got the text, which is the decision. And I've got this layer called actions. Now, actions, like I said, uh, pertains to action script, which is the code that we're going to be putting in to make this work. But before we get to this actual decision, we probably would have came from another menu or screen that would have got us here. And one thing that's really nice about the way that Animate lets you organize yourself 
is you can split your um, animations or your games or your apps or whatever it is that you're building into scenes okay so for every decision if I wanted to I could make that a separate scene so that uh, it would jump from scene to scene and allow me to um, control my timeline a little better you can also do this with animations and so if you're making a really long animation and you want to break it into shorter scenes it's better than having this ridiculously long timeline at the bottom um, that could get really confusing so you break it into smaller scenes and then what animate will do is it will play the scenes in order all right it'll actually play them um, in the order that you choose okay so what we want to do even though I showed you this is the decision that's going to be be made we want to go to the scene that brought us here so we're gonna go up in the top left here and you'll see right now we're in scene 2 alright I'm gonna go to window I'm gonna go to scene and you'll see in this particular game that I'm building right now I have three scenes so let's go to scene 1 alright so here's scene 1 Scene 1 is the intro menu, alright, it is the screen that everybody's going to see when they load the game, alright, and one little thing, uh, this was in a past tutorial, but I just want to clarify, if you clip the content outside the stage, it's right next to the, you can see up in the top right corner here, it will hide the parts that are not going to show when the game is launched. All right, so that's a handy thing so that you can see if you have extra, you know, image, you can turn it off or hide it. So in this very simple uh, menu, we could have added a bunch of buttons. We could add options. We could have had continue. We could add all sorts of things in here that we wanted people to, to actually be able to do to, you know, kind of control this game a little better. But for right now, all we've got is new game. All right, that's the only choice you can make. You notice down in this timeline, um, I've got a couple other things added. I, I've got an intro music layer, which is going to play some scary music when the game starts, kind of give it some, you know, more interest. And then on the actions uh, layer, I don't know. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but on the actions layer, you'll see on this frame. It's hard to tell, but there's an A there. All right, let me zoom in as much as I can. There we go. You see this white A on that frame? That's telling us that that frame has actions applied to it. And let's take a look at what the actions are, okay? And the way you can do that is right-click that frame, go to Actions, and you'll see this is kind of the coding window. All right, it's called the actions window, but this is where you put your code in. You'll notice right now, just a real basic coding lesson here, that this text in gray at the top is called a comment. And the comment is telling us what the code is going to do. So this part right here where it says stop is the actual code. All right, and it's telling us that if we add this to our frame, our game or animation or app or whatever we're creating will pause, will wait at this frame until we, as the viewer, make a decision to have it continue. And that's really important because if we're making a main menu, we don't want it to just jump through and go to the next scene and, you know, fly through and go to this, you know, we don't want it to go past this point until we click new game. Hopefully that makes sense. There's another new thing inside this scene and that is the button itself. All right. So the button itself is, uh, the t a type of symbol that we haven't discussed yet. So if you double click this, you'll notice that our timeline completely changes. We have four states that a button can have and you don't have to use them all. You can use just one or two or none at all. You know, just as long as there's the up state really is all that matters. 
but we have up, which is basically how the button is going to look when nothing is interacting with it. We have over, which is how the button looks when the mouse goes over it. We have the down, which I don't have anything for right now, but that's what happens when the mouse clicks on the button. And then we have a hit zone, which is basically telling it where does the mouse need to be in order to activate the button. All right, so those are four really important things. They're super powerful because there's a lot you can do with that. And by the way, buttons do not need to be text. Anything can be a button. All right, you can bring in pictures, you can have uh, graphics, you can have icons, you can have anything as a button. For example, um, if you were to create a game, let's say, where you had to find hidden pictures all over the page, each piece or each part that you had to find could be a button so that when you scroll over, when you find it and you click it, maybe it disappears or, or whatever. So buttons are really powerful um, and they're easy to create. I'm going to show you how in the next sort of scene here. But we have the button already built here. So let's get out of the symbol editor. Let's click the back arrow at the top left here. And let's get back out to our scene. All right, now we need to tell it what to do when somebody actually clicks this button. Okay, so we want to make sure that the button is selected. I'm using the selection tool. Uh, make sure it's highlighted. Make sure it's got blue around it. It means that it's, it's selected. We're going to go up to Window, and we're going to go to Code Snippets. Now, Code Snippets is a really easy way to code if you have no coding experience. These are basically pre-made code snippets. I used to call it noob snippets because uh, it, it required no real coding experience. Um, but there's a lot of code in here that you can use to build simple stuff uh, without having to know how to code. So inside the action script folder, you'll see all these things that we can apply to our um, game or animation or whatever um, to make them have some code uh, Im implemented into it. All right, and so like let's say we were making a mobile game. You know, here's our mobile touch events and our gesture events and our actions for mobile specific. So for smartphone, right? Um, and so this, this is all good because it's, it's all built. For this button, what we want it to do is we want it to go to scene two, where the decision has to be made. And so that is an action of timeline navigation. So we're going to go into that folder. And this is where we can actually control what or how the timeline moves when we interact with it. So the one that we're looking for is click to go to scene and play. All right. And basically what that's saying, it's pretty self-explanatory, but when we click on whatever we're applying it to, it's going to go to a scene of our choice and, and play that scene. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to double click this. You notice when you do that, it pukes out a bunch of code into our actions palette for this frame one. So it's added it where underneath the stop. And it's giving us instructions on how to use this code. All right. But I'm just going to explain really quickly what this code does. This is, again, just a real quick sort of coding explanation. But right now, you can see that this has been added to button one, and that's the name of this button. It is, has added a listener. Okay, it's listening for a mouse event. It's listening for us to click the mouse all over this button. All right, so this is a function. And what's going to happen, this is the most important part right here, is when we click that mouse, it's going to go to and play frame one of scene three right now. Okay, so this green text right here is going to scene three. Not, we know that's wrong. We know that it's got to go to scene two, but that's just the default text that it puts in. So we got we to gotta change that. And it tells us right here. 
It says replace scene three with the name of the scene that you'd actually or you, you'd like to play. Replace one if you want to go to a frame other than frame one if you wanted to change that too. Basically, this is how it should look. We want it to go to scene two. And so let's test it out. Let's make sure that it actually works. So we're going to go control test. I apologize. I'm going to turn down my sound because it might be loud for that intro music. Control test. I'm going to have it export. And you should hear the music come up in a second here. All right. Creepy music. And the button is activating. You can see it's working. It's, it's going from up to over. And when I click it, it goes to this scene. All right, and that scene is not, that is not the scene we told it to go to. All right, you'll notice that if I go to my scene selector that that is actually scene three. All right, this is the scene where we actually beat the game. However, we wanted it to go to this scene. All right. And the reason it didn't go to this scene is very simple. And it was, you know, I, I did that intentionally so that you guys can see what happens when you don't do this. But the reason it skipped this scene is if you look down in your timeline at actions, you'll notice that there is no action applied on the actions uh, layer or this frame. All right, it doesn't know to sit here and wait for us to do something unless we tell it to. So what we need to do is go into this frame, right click and go to actions, and we need to tell it to stop. And if you remember, that's what we talked about in the first scene, that it needs to be told to stop and wait for us to make a choice before going to whatever the next scene is going to be. All right, so if I go control test now, it should work. New game, and there we go. We're at the scene that we want it to be at. All right, so now we know that if we go to the water tower, we are going to win the game. So let's create a button for that so that we can actually go there and uh, do that quickly. So we're gonna look in our tools, and we're gonna find the text tool, all right? And in Animate with the text tool, um, one common mistake I see people make is that they click and drag a box. Don't do that. All right, that's not, not a good way to use it. In this case especially, we're gonna just go somewhere down the near right here and we're gonna click, just click, and we're gonna type go to water tower. All right, and this text is gonna look really ugly to start there's a couple ways we can do this to change it. I'll show you the easiest way in my opinion. After you've got your text made, you're going to go back to the selection tool. You'll see that it has a like a blue block around it to tell you that it's selected. You're going to go up to properties in the top right corner. Now you can change all of the attributes about that font. So I'm going to go Eller display. That was the font we installed at the start. I'm going to go to the color. I'm going to set it to red. I've got the size here so I can make it bigger or smaller depending on how I want it to look. Um, basically all your sort of typical uh, font options are going to be there and we're going to just move it into position sort of off to the side here. Obviously this is just text. Uh, it's not doesn't have any special attributes so we want to make it into a button. So with that selected we're going to go to modify, convert to symbol, and it's very important when you convert it to a symbol that the type of symbol here is a button symbol. All right, and I'm going to call it choice one. I'm going to hit OK. All right, so now we've got a button. Now, if we double click that to go inside the symbol editor, 
you'll see right now the only thing we have is the up state. All right, but maybe we want it to change color like the title screen or the menu screen. We maybe we want it to roll over to yellow. So on the over state, we're going to right click, insert a keyframe, and we're going to go up to our properties and let's just have that selected. And we're going to change the color to yellow in this case. All right. And now when we go back out, we know that this button is working. And by the way, if you want to see the button work within Animate, and, and let me caution you because this can get really annoying. We're going to go to control. You can enable simple buttons right here. And that will just let you test your buttons to see if they're actually doing what they're supposed to do. But I highly recommend turning it off as soon as you're done with it because otherwise you won't really be able to edit it or, or do anything with it. All right. So selection tool, make sure this is selected. Now we're going to tell it to go to scene three. We're going to go to window, code snippets. We're going to go into action script, timeline navigation, click to go to scene and play, double click. It's going to tell you it needs to apply an instance name and that's totally fine. Just hit OK. And now you can see that this code that it has generated is actually correct. It's going to go to scene three, which is where we beat the game. All right. So if we go control test, this should work just fine. We're going to have our first option built here and it should, it should just work. New game, go to the water tower. We're right on, we beat it. Okay, so we won the game. Now let's say we want to add another scene. And in this case, we want to add the scene where we actually die. So in our scene window, and remember if you close this, go to window scenes, you'll, you'll find it again. We're gonna create a new scene just by clicking this little new page or new button bottom left or the plus and we're gonna just take this new scene that we've got we're gonna drag it down so it's the last scene of the game all right so it's gonna be the last scene and we're gonna put our picture in here that we want for the death scene so I'm gonna import to stage And I just have to find the file. It's going to be inside the tutorial folder, inside of game images. Okay, let me just wait for that to load up. <coughs> uh, let me just find it. Okay. Do, do, do. There you go. So game images, and it's called death. Hit open. It's going to be a really huge file, so we actually have to turn off the clip content so that we can see the edges of it. We're going to go to the transform tool, free transform tool, and we're actually going to grab it from the corner. Hold shift so that you scale it proportionally. And let's just fit this picture to the stage as best as we can something like this if I clip the edges that's what we want it to look like you can position it however you want but this is basically what the death scene is going to look like I'm gonna call this layer background okay I'm going to also add some text here that lets us know that we died so I'm going to go to my text tool, okay, and I'm going to just click on here and I'm going to say, you're dead. All right. And remember to switch back to your selection tool. If you want to edit this quickly, go to properties. I'm going to use the font we installed at the start called True Lies. I'm going to set the color to red going to increase the size of it and then I'm going to move it wherever I kind of think looks best maybe here sure okay now if I wanted to make this even better I could add a restart button or whatever but I'm just I'm just gonna create the scene for now now remember what I said 
we need to tell people to stop and not go any further when they get to this so they can actually make a decision. So we're going to create a new um, layer just by hitting the plus or the new page icon. We're going to call this one Actions. And I'm going to right click. I like zooming in so I can see the frames. I'm going to right click the frame and go to Actions. And I'm going to add a stop with the two brackets and the semicolon to tell it that it has to wait until we make a choice here. All right, and now what we can do is we can go back to scene two. We can actually create the button for that. So we go to our text tool again. This time we're going to have it say, uh, go to the shed. All right, and I'm pretty sure if I left it in that font, people would know that that's where they're going to die. But I'm going to go to my selection tool, properties. I'm going to set it to Eller. I'm going to set the size. I believe it was 19 for the other one. Yeah. The color's already red. Um, I can just kind of move it into position wherever I want here so it lines up with the other one like that. Okay. And if you remember what we did last time, I'm going to go to modify, convert to symbol. I'm going to make sure it's a button, and I'm going to call this one choice two. I'm going to hit OK. Now again, just reviewing what we did before, I'm going to double click. I'm going to go into the over state and I'm going to insert a keyframe. And I'm going to set the properties of this, this text, sorry, properties, to yellow. And I'm going to go back out into my scene. And now I'm going to add the code snippet to tell it to go to scene four. So action script. Timeline navigation, go to scene and play. Yep, we want to uh, add an instance name, okay. And we're gonna go to scene four. And that's it. This should all work now. If I go control test, we should have a working game. Very simple game, but it will work. All right, so new game, go to water tower, we win. By the way, if I right click and I go rewind, I can start it again. New game, go to the shed, and we die. All right, we can play that full screen if we want to make it look cooler or whatever, but you get the point. All right, pretty simple to make a simple decision-based game. One thing I wanted to mention about stops, <coughs> because they are super powerful, um, what you could do with a stop I should have probably mentioned this as we were going. You could have an entire video or animation that plays at the start of the scene before you have to make the decision or before you have it, it sort of stop and wait for somebody to do something. So, you know, if you embedded a, a video clip or an animation that you created in here and you had it sort of play for a couple seconds before, then your stop might end up, you know, a couple seconds down, you know, wherever that video or animation ends. And that would allow you to have these sort of cut scenes um, after each decision that was made. All right, which might be really, really cool. Anyways, make sure you save it. Hopefully that made sense. Um, we are going to be making some simple games. All right, and I hope that you guys learned a bit from that. Till next time, thanks for watching.